looks likely to be fought over the breakdown battleground. Q Joe Launchbury, England's outstanding turnover operator. Lacking the back row specialists of New Zealand, Australia and South Africa, England's breakdown needs to be a collective effort. The Wasp will be at its very heart. As for France, well, keep an eye out for Eddie Benarous. Is the loose head prop going to prove the future of French front row play? The 24-year-old is fast emerging as one of the most powerful scrummagers France has produced in years. And watch him cover the ground, he can really shift. Here come the anthems. It's a crackling atmosphere. Replacements from Jamie George at hooker. A first cap awaits, a big night awaits. Luke Cowan Dickey having failed to hit the mark when he came on last week. Nick Easter in for his first involvement of this mini series. It's also got the feel of last chance saloon for Atwood, Cipriani and 12 trees. Well, fifth choice until Dylan Hunt for the World Cup. He saw the door of opportunity open wide last week. And I reckon he has the technique and the temperament to storm through it here in the capital of France. England's record here at the Stade de France, not bad at all, really. France have six victories, England four. Of course, last week was the 100th meeting between these two. England doing enough to get the win, 19-14. Doing more than enough with those tries, some excellent scores. But sort of hanging on at the end. Gail Fiku, 2014, broke England's heart with a late match-winning score. Breaks haven't gone his way since, he needs a little bit more of that magic if he is to make the French squad. If you know which way. Jaco Piper is the referee, as he will be on the opening night of the Rugby World Cup when England meet Fiji. An awful lot of these England players in tonight's 23 will be there for that one as well. And this evening will determine in what shape they will be in and who will be going with them on the journey. Lies him arm up very quickly to give the penalty. It's also going to be really useful for England tonight having Jaco Piper referee because against Fiji, you know, a game that can just break up when you play the Pacific Islanders. You want to know as much as you can about the way a referee referees the game. Really advantageous, I think, for England having the South African referee tonight. France will get him as well in their pool against Romania. Maybe not quite the uh, same significance. The referee's role that day, that will be a game that France will be expected to win and win well. That's a tremendous tackle by Burrell, but you know, no doubt at all, he did roll away slowly. And England do need to eliminate all these breakdown errors. So it's spreading from a long way out. He's France's big boot, and he's certainly got the distance. He's got it all right. Everything about it. Scott Spedding, the man from Krugersdorp in South Africa, and they love him here in Paris. England go very quick. Young seemed to have control of the situation. In comes Cole, clearly from an offside position, penalty given away should be 6-0 it's a pretty poor pass to Wes Fafana he did very well to hold on to it closer range change of kicker Freddy Michelak and there it is just needs another point now to break the French record let's go down to pitch side and will Yes, Miles, just thinking about the fly-half debate, Ford v Farrell, everyone assumes obviously George Ford's attacking game. At the moment, just lacking a little bit of control, kick straight out, missed time. Just watch Billy Vunapola lead the line there, oh, that's awful. <laughs> oh, really, that's pretty amateur, that's pretty amateurish. It's very sloppy from England, it's sharp from France, it's organised, powerful. But England at the moment are making life far easier for the home team than they would like.
Christophe Lamaison, 380 points. Freddy Michelac alongside him now after his three already tonight. And there he is in front. Nobody has scored more points in French Test rugby history than that man. Freddy Michelac made his debut all those years ago, 2001. So it's a, a long career, just about the longest as well in a French shirt. Well, he was the superstar, wasn't he, leading into 2003. He cracked under the pressure in the rain of the semi-final. His career seemed to be sliding away, but what credit to him, he's back again. Noah Nakatathi with the take again on the restart, and here's Pape. Because Nakatathi was the man who nearly didn't put the ball down at Twickenham. Continue running into the north stand. It's a tight call in March. That free flow. He was the golden boy in Australia. And Wilkinson blew him out of the water that day when the rain came down, and it just sensed that his career was dribbling away. A spell in Natal gave him a bit of zest. He's back in France, he's back in contention for the World Cup. He's back haunting England now. And this a little bit closer in than the one that he missed, and it showed. Kept his rhythm, kept his form. You can see there a bit of strapping around his fractured hand that he injured at the end of last season, but that's okay and his boot is certainly fine. Clive Woodward. Yeah, Barnes, just to, just to pick up on Barnes, in 2003, Michelac was the star. It was the England forward back blew Michelac away, and it's what is happening today. But he's had a difficult first 25, and he'll feel a lot better if this one goes over. Well, that was a record against France for an Englishman in that meeting in March, that points fest at Twickenham. But because the French pack are in such control, England cannot generate the fifth gear that they played in almost all that night, and France are able to handle everything with ease. The pack really has got England in a vice grip. Clive's quite right. Well, Clive was saying before kickoff, wasn't he, that forwards win World Cups. At the moment, as he was just saying again there, live during the game, France all over England up front. England have to sort that, but at least... George Ford has this chance to get them on the board. Just about their first visit inside the French 22. Well, from a long kick downfield that was dealt with by Spedding. Yeah, comprehensively outplay. There's Jamie George. Pulse going for a second, thinking, here we go, my debut, but not yet. 30 minutes gone, Tom Young's top key to go quickly and the waves of attack keep coming. There was another earlier kick where England just feed in France and bring in the runners into it. And England are getting stressed out defensively because they're feeding France's counter. Tactically, they're all over the place at the moment. Yes, it wasn't even a debate for Pickamore whether he went quickly there, it was a gift. And another gift for Michelac in this form. But all the boots. Pretty well, all France and Michelac. Spedding got the first one. Michelac, the one miss from distance on the angle, but nobody could say that France do. Got some of that air back in the lungs now, George Ford. After that endless attack, it seemed. Right at the end of it, is the full stop going to be three points? It is from Ford. We will have time to restart. I think England would be wise to catch this ball and get it off the park, get in 15-6 down. Nine points deficit is not the end of the world. This has not been the 40 minutes England wanted leading towards the World Cup, but if they go in 15-6 15-6 down, they still have an opportunity to bounce back. If they'd played together. Right, so play now. <laughs> Maybe Serge will be on the crash Number ball nowadays. Pick a balls. Tears board. Bastero. That's Uge, great line, Uge, oh, step two. What a finish that is. That is one of the best 
wingers finishers you will see simple as said earlier in the game he has a habit of hurting England and he's done it there just slash through them beautiful line and then for a big man his footwork is superb that's a lovely inside ball there but Mike Brown done on the inside outside step Joseph can't get back to him Michelac draws Joe Marler Brown one on one gets hopelessly built beaten there now can't get back to him and that is superb play from the right wing stepping in Phil it's the pace at which it's all done and Serge Blanco the great himself would have been proud of that one French director cut to the back three perfect timing one minute later wow that was a fantastic French score and Michelac an all important first score in the second half goes to France and it was one to Sabre yes they'll be blowing kisses back to Uge well, a few years ago it was deflections off kicks that just bounced up into his hand this time that was a beautifully worked move and it has to be said again Freddie Michelac uncomplicated but a very fine performance Rob Shaw grimacing and care feeds and out it comes now to Cipriani he's got Brown outside Cipriani through makes his mark and the time that is available Danny Cipriani gets his name on the scoreboard as a try scorer well we know Cipriani's a rapid Did you know what the first time in 70 minutes the England pack and a few backs in helping along have driven France backward and they have been able to suck the blue shirts into the ball and that creates the space that we haven't seen when England have trying to go wide today France sucked in three men there around Danny Kerr the little delay from Ford is beautiful and Cipriani little little chip step there beautiful check and go but England first time the pack have really drawn the French into them Leveled the try count at least, and George Ford gets a conversion. 25 13. Yeah, but England get another score here. That's Put a what, lot of gloss on it, wouldn't it? Well, that's what England's backs can do if they get the right sort of ball, but they haven't had the right sort of ball, and therefore, because of that, they played the wrong sovereign with the pair of them. Ben Morgan just had 40 minutes last week on his comeback, feeling a bit stiff and sore. An important little cameo here from Easter. Ford, Cipriani, here comes Makovunapola, Mike Brown, man on the outside is Jonathan Joseph, and England are going to get in again, are they? Yes, they are. Joseph, just before the end, even more gloss. That's a nice play there again from England. Takes me back to Dunedin when they were being absolutely hammered. And then they came back again. The delay, the quality of the passing is very good there. Mike Brown draws his final man well. And Joseph eases down and then just accelerates. Super play. That little step inside from Brown just gives Joseph the chance there. And amazingly, England have a chance to, if this goes over or not, certainly not lose. Two minutes for a seven pointer. England's second try. Francis was a beauty, Uge, but another for England. Here's Ford with a conversion. That looks really good. Beauty. Well, five points in it. Marzi hasn't been at his best, but he has kicked absolutely everything. No question about his goal kicking. 